This is my 1993 Nissan Pathfinder. For a while now, I've been trying to track down an angry wheel bearing sort of noise. Doing the front wheel bearings didn't seem to do any good, and so I started looking at the rears. And uh, the service manual has a really good, you know, walkthrough of how to do it if you've got all the right tools, which I don't. So I looked online to see how people actually do it, and I could only find videos for the drum brake rear end trucks. Mine has the disc brake rear end, and for some reason it has different wheel bearings. So I figured if I was looking for a video, somebody else probably was too. So that's this video. It's more of a how I did it than a how to. Um, I'm just some guy in a shed, you know, <laughs> use your judgment, but here's how I did it. Don't forget jack stands. To get this axle shaft out, we have to take this brake caliper off, but it gets worse. Uh, we can't just take it off and hang it off of something. We actually have to undo the line because that little tab is part of the backing plate. Damn it. Damn it. This should keep the dirt out of it. Just a brake line end with the hole soldered up. All right, so held on by two bolts. I'm behind 17 millimeter. Try and get this out without destroying the brake hose. Now I just gotta get this drum off and that should just pop right off. Make sure you completely mangle your backing plate while you're doing that. That really helps the process. There we go. Come on you. Get out of there. Yeah. Now we gotta get the parking brake assembly apart. And yeah, we got the one notch that we got to get through to get to that and that. Now the service manual shows how this all goes back together. And I'll throw a couple of links in the description for a couple of different service manuals. Come on, you bastard. But it's not a bad idea just to take a picture sometimes the uh, illustrations in the manual are not the best. There we go. And remember, this may or may not be chock full of asbestos, so don't, you know, go blowing into it with the air hose and then breathing deeply. This would be a great time to replace these shoes. I've actually had this break apart before, and I discovered that the shoes looked exactly the same as the new ones I'd just bought. Uh, they just weren't adjusted right. Obviously you don't want to mess up your uh, hardware for this if you can avoid it. I'm told it's getting a little difficult to come by, although apparently the uh, springs and whatnot for a Honda Rodeo or no Honda Passport I think it was. I don't know, I'll throw a link in the description to that thread. But yeah, apparently there's a Honda kit that you can use. Always make sure, by the way, that before you, you know, tear apart something in a wheel arch, you um, don't wash the truck and uh, it's mud season. That's called planning. These parking brake cables aren't the easiest to come by either, from what I've heard. I think somebody tracks them down in Indonesia or something. And I'm not aware of any uh, parts that'll cross-reference over. Doesn't mean they're not out there though, but I'd rather not find out. All right, now we gotta get this uh, parking brake.
cable off of here. It's held on with two, I believe two 10 millimeter nuts back behind. To get this in free, you want to grab the end of that spring and pull it out of that little um, guide that's in there, and then that'll come loose. And then this just comes right out, like so. Spring through there. Come on, you. There we go. Now this is um, bolted to the control arm here take that off you want a little extra room but got it off just fine without all right so now get off the four nuts holding the bearing assembly to the rest of her those are also 17s it's also worth noting that the service manual says not to reuse these uh, they suggest replacing the nuts I imagine that's because there's some sort of distorted thread lock nut. Um, yeah, mine are going to get some Loctite. I think that'll be fine. Yeah, they look pretty good. I assume this rolled edge is supposed to be the uh, thread distortion or something. Eh. Loctite. She'll be fine. Okay, and at this point, there should be nothing holding this assembly to this assembly. Hey! And we've got gear oil coming out. Don't know what I expected, really. Mine came out by hand. Nissan reckons you might need tool. Nice of them to specify. Of course they do down here and uh, yeah it looks like it's basically just a slide hammer and some kind of duck's foot arrangement. Yeah luckily mine wasn't stuck in that bad and I needed that. Matter of fact mine just kind of fell off my hands so that's nice. The manual says while you're doing this be careful not to damage the oil seal inside of there. I don't know why, because we're going to be replacing it anyway. Okay, so we can see the bearing down there, and we can see there's not really any grease in it. I'll be interested to see what those rollers look like when we get her apart, but we're not there yet. So let's get her up off the floor, see what we can do about that stupid splined nut. Well, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Nissan says take that dead seal out. There we go. Yep, well, there's the rubber part of it. I'm gonna try and collapse this without messing up the housing. Okay, got a bit of a tab down. Twist it with the vice grips. Out she comes. Worth making sure that the um, spring comes out with the seal that sits inside of the seal and it's what holds the seal against the axle shaft. Let's see, um, unbend lock washer with screwdriver. And I do actually have new lock washers because they're cheap. There we go. That's got it disengaged. It's got it completely out of my way. Wonderful. Now this is where Nissan's sense of humor returns as they tell us to remove bearing lock nut with tool. And uh, I looked up, there's a kit for this. It's a Kentmore tool kit. I'll throw the uh, part number up on screen if I can be arsed. And uh, I was able to find one online for like $1,300. In the video I watched where somebody did this job on a drum brake rear end, they just used a, uh, like a punch and just worked it around. I got a brass one here because I don't want to mess this up because I don't have a spare one of those. Okay, so I turned the camera off and hit it like two more times and uh, yeah, so that was easier than I expected. 
Also worth noting, the, uh, the big bevel faces the lock washer. Yep, that's that. And that does look like the new parts I have, so that's nice. We got one more washer down in here. Yeah, not held in by much other than what's left of the grease. Come on, you. Come on. This has a little locating tab on the side that you're not on. This doesn't look like it matters which way it's in, but the uh, smooth side was up and the sharp side was down. Now that's the part where things start getting real fun, is we need to use the press and some of those super special press tools that came in the uh, $1,300 kit that I didn't buy to pull the axle out of the bearing. Well, I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but this is what I come up with. Let's start cranking on that thing, see if it works. You'll notice I have a northern tool catalog under there. That's so that when it falls, these uh, lug studs don't dig into the concrete and screw themselves up. Okay, I'm squishing the piece of wood I put in between. That's not helping. Okay, replace the piece of wood with a big-ass copper washer. That is perfect. It's loading up. I feel like I ought to be wearing safety squints for this. Just bending that faster, aren't I? Yes, yes, I am. Bending the piss. Oh, okay, this is working. Cool. Yay. And with that popped free, we can just pick that up. All right. I just need to get that off of there. Bought a brand new bearing separator just for this occasion. And uh, I'm not sure about the brand name on that. I'm not going to tell you this is how you're supposed to use this kit. I think it might work. She's got some force on her now. Hey! Yes! just got this what's left of the grease seal down here. This uh, spring had a bad day. <laughs> that was just uh, jamming the bearing splitter in there. So now we need to get this out and um, you know, let's see what the uh, service manual recommends. I'm gonna guess it's tool. No, even better. It calls for a suitable tool, which appears to be, I don't know, what is that, an old timing belt idler? So looking at this outer race some more, you can see it's right up flush here, so that's going to be the step it seats against, and that's going to be the direction it comes out. And uh, I think I've worked out what to use for suitable tool. Obviously this bearing race fits right into it. Got this shaft from a Volkswagen steering pump. I think that'll do pretty well. Hey! Okay, that's actually not the noise I was hoping for. That. The fuck? Ha! <laughs> okay, well. Pop the studs out. Be honest, that's not quite what I was going for. Okay, so those two chunks are um, parts of another wheel bearing I cut up a while back. They're just sitting in my scrap pile. They're about the right height, so that's between this and the uh, body of it now. Clearly that was not a suitable tool. Well, in case that wasn't enough fun, I dropped the uh, bearing race and the cage broke and the little rollers went all from hell to breakfast, so I opened up the uh, tool I probably should have been using, a bearing driver kit. Let's see how that does. 
Okay, so I got the one bearing driver. These are just basically aluminum bits here. Got these off Amazon too. What's this one? This is 72 millimeter. Seems to fit pretty well. Doesn't catch on the housing. I can see. Just setting that on there so I don't dish the one of them. Okay, that's a fair whack of force. Let's just get a little heat into this thing here. Not like I need to worry about the paint, right? Hey! I'm gonna assume that was good. Yeah, it's gonna, nope, it's not gonna fight the whole way out. Excellent. Sure, all that rust doesn't matter, but, uh, well, we're here. Well, it's not much of a respray, but I got the uh, real ugly part anyway. So there's this little bracket here. That's going to be where the long ones go. Short ones will be on this side. Always make sure you paint something right before um, hammering something in right next to it. All right, it thinks I need to remove that seal with a punch, but um, yeah, that seal caught on the bearing and came off on its own. I don't know, you could get the bearing out without that seal popping out, so don't worry about that. Well, the axle shaft looks okay to me, except uh, when somebody was stamping this, they, uh, <laughs> they got the four upside down, so. Good job. All right, meet our new bearing. This is, yep, same as the old bearing. Both NTN, part number's the same. Should be good to go. And yeah, this bearing comes sort of pre-packed with something. I assume that's grease. I mean, obviously it's grease. I assume it's wheel bearing grease. I don't know that. Um, yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to try and clean up as much of that as I can and then repack this with the uh, sticky red stuff I'm used to using. In case you're looking for a part number, there you go. Alright, well I didn't like the clear grease that was in there. I can't imagine they would have put grease in there that you couldn't just throw it in and run it. But, um, yeah, I cleaned off what I could and then repacked the rest of it with some of this stuff. Yeah, um, probably just made more work for myself here, but hopefully it's all good. Now the manual says to put this thing in as one unit, but there's nothing keeping these races in. And um, I'm pressing it down like that, and yeah, I just think that's going to fall out. Um, it'll be retained once I have a seal on it, and then obviously it'll be retained because it's can't it can't go anywhere anymore. But um, yeah, that's, yeah, I guess it's got enough grease in it, it probably can't go anywhere and I'll just have something underneath it. Okay, just gonna grease the inside of this a little bit. Okay, so the question here is how we're gonna push this thing down from the outer race only, because we don't want to push here, because that'll be loading the rollers, and that would be bad. So, I'm gonna use the old outer race as a press tool, and then let's see. that, yes it will, just barely, but it will. Okay, wonderful. And I don't want to just set this on top because again, I don't know that that isn't slightly proud of that, and I don't want to put the force in the wrong place. Should start going in pretty easily, yep, there we go. Oop. I don't know if that just straightened or went cockeyed. Oh, there we go. We're good. Nice. That sounded awfully bottomed. Yeah. <laughs> Thought I was right there for a second. Thought I'd press that in far enough to stick. Thankfully, no. Okay. Put a thumb on this so it can't come out. Turn it over, and yes, we are flush with that little lip there. Might be a 
Yeah, that's just grease squeezing out. I think we're good. Beautiful. Okay. Now we got to press an outer seal on here, which means setting it on the back side. So I may have been a little premature in putting those back in. Well, I got to thinking about the uh, best way to fixture this, and then I realized all I'm pressing in is a seal. Scrap wood should be just fine. Here's a new seal. There's the part number. Okay, grease that up. Smeared a little grease in here too where the spring is. I've heard you can have issues with the, the spring popping out on some applications. Got it even out, yes, yes it is. Okay. And now that bearing race can't fall out. All right, I got the ceiling surface cleaned up in there. Gave it a little attention with some Scotch-Brite. See that line is where the lip on the seal rides. Here's the old seal and there's that lip sticking up there. That's what rides in there. Anyway, hopefully that's cleaned up at least where it doesn't chew up the new seal. And I think I figured out my stack up of um, suitable tools here. Yeah, that's both inner races and then this was the selector from a Toyota front differential. So, let's try and press all this together now. I did smear a little grease in around that seal too. You never know it by the noises it's making, but there's grease on the surfaces that are moving against each other here. And let's see, yeah, this is just gonna bottom itself for a minute. Okay, I'm gonna say that's bottomed. Beautiful. Just got the washer, got the tab, got the slot. Okay, here's the part number for the new lock washer. Got this through um, part souk. Goes down into the same groove. Like that. The manual says we want between 181 and 217 pound feet. But uh, the only tool that they show is that. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm thinking the official way, Nissan way of doing this is use that hand tool and just give her a I could just beat it with the, uh, the rod again. Just a little hesitant to do that because if a little chunk of this comes off, it's going to land in the grease and it could end up in the bearing. That would not be good. I'm going to have to try not to laugh too hard at this. It is not an arts and crafts steampunk project. That is a custom socket. It's a very silly socket for a very silly fastener. Well, I tried some stuff and it didn't work. I tried that uh, bolt on the side there and it just started deforming and I knew it was going to snap off. My torque wrench doesn't go high enough anyway, so I decided that uh, what they show in the manual was probably about as good as I was going to get. And yeah, the plan is just give her what I can give her, set the lock washer. It's not like this is setting bearing tension, right? Because all of that is held in by the stuff that I pressed, so it should be fine. That was the sound of me trying to convince myself, by the way, if you were wondering. Come on. Oh. 
All right, that is as tight as a 165 pound nerd can make it. That nerd being me. So I am going to go ahead and set the lock washer. Now you can see we've got a different number of tabs than slots, which means there should be one lined up pretty close. Looks like it's that one. Okay, there's that beat in the rest of the way. Beautiful. Here's the seal from that bag. It is a cock. Yep, having all kinds of fun with brand names tonight, aren't we? Anyway, it needs to go in there. And here's our good friend suitable tool. Suppose I should have greased that, huh? Oh, that started now. All right, before I put that axle shaft in, I'm just gonna grease that up. Don't want it going in dry now. One last seal is this O-ring. Now this one's not necessarily bad, but I'm in here. And this O-ring is why it all came off so easily. It keeps all of this getting all nasty. Done. Nice. Okay, I just gotta slap the axle shaft back in. In some countries you'd have to blur this. You can just be real careful here. And to support it as well as I can. Not on the seal. Grab the diff sooner or later. There we go. Hey. One thing I forgot to mention, did off camera, make sure that the bearing turns smoothly before you uh, button everything up. It does. It's got a lot of drag on it because it's got actual grease in it now. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, I got something weird. Got it stuck back in there. It's all splined in. It's springing off of something. I can't figure out what. Well, I decided to spare you folks the swearing and the uh, thrown tools of <laughs> putting this drum brake back together. But, um, quick summary here if you're struggling with gears. Start with the, um, there's the lever coming off of this that goes down to the parking brake. Get that done up first. Gonna pull the spring back, pop it in. Spring retains it. Get this in there. Don't forget the washer behind the spring and then get the top spring in and then you can start to get this side on i got the spring on for that side and then kind of wrangled that round because it's it wants to pop off all the contact points and then fight that one on this washer back here is a pain in the ass it pops off of its little shoulder and then you can't get the spring on because the washers pop down you push the washer up and then you come in with the spring and it pops down again finally got that and then um, yeah get the adjuster in and then get the lower spring in I backed the adjuster all the way off because that just made it easier to put in. I'll adjust that back up once it's all back together. Speaking of which, before I put that back on, I'm just gonna try and give myself some hope in hell getting that uh, rotor back off again the next time. Just gonna put a little bit of anti-seize around here. I say applying far too much anti-seize. Also, I had a look at the manual, and uh, it says that there should be threaded holes in the uh, brake rotor. So clearly I'm dealing with some aftermarket crap where they thought, ah, it doesn't need that. Okay. 
Not a bad time to check your brake pads. Mine are present. One of these days I want to try putting better pads on this thing, but this is not that day. I don't know what kind of pads these are. They're just what was on it when I got it. Come on. Just gonna do these up to old German spec. Goot and tight. Not a bad idea before you start this to make sure that your uh, master cylinder res is full. Before it starts trying to leak all your fluid out. That's not a bad idea to have it ready to have the hole unplugged ready to stick that into before you open it. Well, that was easy. Seeing as how I've got the tool, it would just be rude to not use it, you know? Hey. Yeah, they're definitely not as tight on there as the uh, service manual reckons they ought to be. That's funny. This one's got the upside down floor too. It's got a little spring to it, but not as much as the other side. So now it's time to do these uh, e-brake adjusters. A bit of silicone helps get those out. I suppose if I was smart, I would have popped these little plugs out while I had the backing plates off. I think I know which way I put this in here which is threads facing the caliper, which means that it needs to go that way, which means I need to push down on the wheel, which is there. I'm gonna have a short screwdriver and it's gotta be narrow enough to fit in here. It's all a braille job. So, good luck. There it's moving. I'm just going to do this for about 35 minutes. Okay, I've adjusted it until the wheel won't move. So now we just need to uh, back that off click. Hey, that was the noise I was looking for. Okay, it's got it backed off a little. Good and tight. With that set, can't move the wheel. Pop it off. No problem. Don't forget to put the little plugs back in. This is not necessarily the safest way to check your brakes.
I was hoping to shoot a triumphant outro for this one and talk about how this fixed that bearing noise that I was chasing. Except that it didn't. So um, I guess I get to tear into the front end of this truck again. Judging by the discoloration and the way the gear oil was washing the grease out, I imagine I would have been into those rear bearings eventually. So I guess I'll call this preventative maintenance to make myself feel better. But <laughs> yeah, I probably didn't need to jump into this one actually. Anyway, I hope this video helps out someone else who's trying to keep one of these old pigs on the road, or at the very least, uh, you guys had a good laugh watching me jump every time the press made a noise. Either way, thanks for watching, and uh, good luck with whatever you're wrenching on. Get out of it, you stunted dinosaurs.